Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Over and prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here, the Eric Erickson Show across the nation. Glad to have you with me. Really glad to have you with me. The phone number, should you wish to be on the program, 877 877- 97 Eric 877-973-7425. This is one of those fun days. Uh, it can be a dangerous day. A lot of the headlines, except for, for out of the gate, what we need to talk about are, are almost repetitious headlines, which allows me a little more flexibility and stuff I want to cover and how I want to cover it and the angles I want to cover it. And we'll get there with some stuff. I, I'm happy to take your phone calls about more diverse topics today as well. But out of the gate, we have to begin with what I think is a really big story that uh, we can't underestimate. The Olympics are now ongoing in China. I had worried about how the American media might cover it. And uh, to his credit, Jake Tapper at CNN is one of the most vocal critics of China across the media. Jake Tapper at CNN is doing a series on China and its human rights abuses. The BBC has stepped up a Dutch reporter in China during a live broadcast back to the Netherlands, got taken off the air by the communist Chinese for daring to talk about some of those human rights concerns. They shut that reporter down. Meanwhile, in this country, Nancy Pelosi is telling our athletes they need to shut up because they don't want to get in trouble in China. Yes, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, is encouraging silence of our athletes in China. I understand her concern. I don't want to blow this out of proportion to a degree in that they could be punished, uh, but I think she should be encouraging them all, strength in numbers, to stand up. Uh, It's appalling the Speaker of the House of Representatives of the United States of America would encourage American athletes to keep quiet in light of human rights abuses that aren't alleged, they're not accused, they're actually happening. Maybe she should retire or resign. But as I suspected, China is playing us, and NBC News is going along with it. This is the tweet from NBC News. China chooses Uyghur athlete to deliver final Olympic flame at opening ceremony after nations condemn country's record against Muslim minority. And this is Savannah Guthrie, who I actually think is a a fairly even-handed person most of the time. One of the better ones at NBC News, all things being equal. I mean, that's not saying much, but nonetheless... This is her. Listen to this. Like this moment uh, is quite provocative. It's a statement from the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, to choose an athlete from the Uyghur minority. It is an in-your-face response to those Western nations, including the U.S., who have called this Chinese treatment of that group genocide and diplomatically boycotted these games. There will be much discussion about this. Well, I'm interested in that much discussion because it's not accusations. It's not allegations. It's the actual truth of the matter asserted. They run internment camps, which are the modern Chinese version of the concentration camps. An in-your-face response to those Western nations, including the United States, who have called the Chinese treatment of that group genocide and diplomatically boycotted these games. It's like Hitler allowing a Jewish athlete to light the flame in Nazi Germany in the 1936 Olympics, where they were already beginning the persecution of the Jews. That's an in-your-face response to those countries worried about the Nazi treatment of the Jews. Pay no attention to everything else going on. How the Western media can be so easily manipulated and played. 
you know, we should have boycotted altogether the Olympics. I have some friends who disagree with me because of the hard work of the athletes, but it was the moral right decision to boycott it. But Joe Biden couldn't bring himself to do the moral right thing because Jimmy Carter did that in 1980 with the Soviets. The result would have been to compare Joe Biden further to Jimmy Carter, and he doesn't want that. So it's a diplomatic boycott. Our our elected officials just aren't showing up. Our diplomats just aren't showing up. Western wor- The Western world isn't, but China, they don't care. They're getting all the publicity they need from Western media outlets. It is amazing how easily the media can be played in these things. It reminds me of the Joe Rogan stuff, left-wing agitators get CNN and MSNBC and the like to begin harassing Spotify. You know, if it was just uh, left-wing agitators, would it have gotten as much traction? It would have gotten more than if conservative agitators had, but the left was able to manipulate the media in ways the right cannot. You know, at CNN, some of the anchors and reporters there are horrified that Jeff Zucker has been shown the door. One of the Democratic members of Congress said they were so upset about this. This member of Congress was so upset Jeff Zucker was gone because, you know, if Jeff Zucker hadn't been there on January 6th, who knows how CNN's coverage would have gone? Really, when you've got members of Congress, politicians upset that you're going, maybe you're doing it wrong. It turns out Jeff Zucker and his mistress were coordinating messaging with Andrew Cuomo in violation of Andrew Andrew Cuomo's rules. Or look at the attacks on Netflix over Dave Chappelle. How coordinated an extremely small minority of loud and vocal voices could be with the media to harass and boycott and put pressure on shareholders of Netflix for daring to stand with Dave Chappelle. It wasn't a majority of people. Nor is it a majority of people with with Joe Rogan. A a research shows more than 50% of Americans don't even know who Joe Rogan is. But Joe Rogan has more listeners per show than any show on CNN or MSNBC or even Fox News. So he is a competitive threat. The media delegated to itself the position of arbiters of truth and fact. They hire their fact checkers. They got to put them to work. They got to go after Joe Rogan to silence him. And along comes Xi Jinping, the dictator of China, who runs genocidal ethnic cleansing camps in the Uyghur areas of China, exterminating them, separating children from their parents, burning Bibles and Qurans, forcibly aborting children. And the media says, oh, he put up a Uyghur to light the torch. This is just a big middle finger to the West. Look at that. He's showing them. how easily the media is played. But the easiness of playing the media, doesn't it? It it comes from two groups. And this is where it gets the most troubling. It comes from the progressive left in this country and the American haters abroad. The people who hate America are the most easily able to play the press. And this has been going on for decades. It's not a recent phenomenon. The, the, it, it, during the Iran-Contra days, the, the, the commies in Central America so easily played the press and got sympathy on their side. The Soviets used to eat up playing the press. Led The, the Democratic politicians led Bernie Sanders and, and the like come over. Tour the Soviet Union, see how wonderful it was. You had Stalin played the New York Times over uh, the famine in Ukraine. Walter Durante got a Pulitzer for his coverage, and it turns out he was being a propaganda spinmeister for Stalin. And now a lot of the American press is doing it for the Chinese. Heck, the Chinese, they got Apple on board, Disney, Nike, the NBA. They've got American companies on board perpetuating their prominence. 
It's horrific. We should know and be honest and open about what's going on here. And, you know, for the American media, there should be some self-awareness because we know what's going on. Even a lot of people on the political left these days realize what's happening in China, and they don't like it either. More and more people realize the human rights abuses are there. We should be outraged at Nancy Pelosi telling our athletes to keep silent. Yes, it's true. From her vantage point, she doesn't want anything to happen to the athletes, and something could happen to the athletes, and the athletes aren't allowed to make political protests. They could be punished. That is true. They're there to compete. Let's be fair on that regard. But you'd kind of like to see the Speaker of the House of the United States of America, of the People's House. We, the people of the United States of America, you would like to see her stand up and say, defy it, speak out, expose it, get the coverage, make it open and notorious. I mean, after all, she was perfectly fine with people burning down the streets of America to protest George Floyd. Can we not protest? The concentration camps of China, while in China, can our athletes not be bold and brave and in solidarity? You know, a lot of them are actually going to boycott the opening ceremonies or have, although I see an ad now on Twitter I'm about to block. Celebrating, now here come the athletes, coverage of the opening games. We should have never gone to China. And our press that is there, NBC News in particular, which has the exclusive rights to broadcast the Olympic Games in the United States, should be far more vocal and far more open about what this actually is. A propaganda campaign for a tyrannical regime's coming out party wants to be a dominant superpower on planet Earth, and they're fallen for the propaganda. They're willing to play up the propaganda. And a lot of it has to do with, oh, well, all those conservatives are hating China these days. Tucker Carlson isn't a fan, so let's play it up. Give him the middle finger. Y'all, the Chinese are ethnically cleansing. That's a fancy way of saying they are exterminating a religious minority. The Chinese are tearing down churches, jailing pastors, separating children from their parents who are believers so that the children are raised to worship the communist state. In parts of China, citizens are being told if they have crosses in their home, they will not get money for food. That actually is happening. That's actually documented. The Chinese government is encouraging people to take down the crosses on the walls of their homes and put up pictures of Xi Jinping, the Chinese dictator. Take down pictures of Jesus and put up pictures of Xi Jinping or Mao if they want food, if they want money, if they want a job. They've got to do it. They have to do it. It's documented. It's not an accusation. It's not an allegation. It's actually happening. In Hong Kong, they're rounding up Hong Kong dissidents and jailing them, disappearing them, killing them. It's not an accusation. It's not an allegation. It's actually happening. And the American media is all, oh, that Xi Jinping, he let a Uyghur light the torch today. If the American media of today were around in the 1930s, we probably would have just let Hitler have Europe because the media would have fallen for the propaganda. I want to cut corners and just get to the chase. A lot of you hear podcast ads and radio ads for Bull and Branch, and you're thinking, eh, they're just telling you it because they're getting paid. I'm actually telling you it because I'm a customer. We actually have Bull and Branch sheets, and yes, they are an ad. Yes, this is an ad, but yes, I really am a customer. I only like to do ads for companies that I really like, and I love Bull and Branch. So does my wife. My wife actually heard the ads, and she wanted to try the sheets, and now they are the sheets in our house. Bull and Branch does not cut corners. They make super soft, wonderful sheets. They use the softest organic cotton they can find. They get better with every wash. They soften and soften and soften, and they only use 100% sustainable raw materials. They're the first fair trade certified manufacturer of linen. You can feel as good about your Bull and Branch sheets as they feel against your skin. 
They are so soft. They don't get too hot. They don't get too cold. They're just great. And every wash improves them. That, I'm telling you, is one of the coolest things about these sheets. It's like sleeping on a new bed every time you wash the sheets. It's great. Now, you can experience the best sheets you've ever felt at BowlinBranch.com. Get 15% off your first set of sheets when you use the promo code ERIC at checkout. That's BowlinBranch, B O L L. A N D branch.com promo code Eric E R I C K. Hello there. This hour of the program brought to you by First Liberty Building and Loan. They are in Noonan, Georgia, but they can help you nationwide. If your business is a small business and wants to grow, well, you can grow it with First Liberty. Anywhere nationwide, we're talking loans, 750000 and up. Uh, they want to help you, and uh, you need to buy a building, build a building, whatever. Reach out to them. A lot of banks are telling you no. They want to tell you yes. FirstLibertyGA.com. FirstLibertyGA.com. All right, uh, to the phones. I want to go to Rob up first today. Welcome to the program. Yeah, thanks for having me, Eric. Love your show and a fellow rec tech guy. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Hey, there's a movement going around. You probably know, hashtag not one minute. And it's for people that are committing to not watching one minute of the Olympics this year. Oh, Just fantastic. thought maybe you could promote that. I, that's great. Uh, you know, during commercial break, I blocked the NBC Olympics account. Um, I don't, I don't want to even see cool. it in my Twitter feed. Uh, all their promotions and videos. Uh, that's a great. So not one minute. All right. I'm going to have to go back yeah. and, and do that. So thank you very much, Rob. That not one minute. I don't, I don't want to give it. Now, listen, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just telling you my thoughts on this in truth. I'm, I'm just telling you my thoughts and here's why. Um, I love the winter Olympics more than the summer Olympics. The skeleton is my favorite thing to watch. And I, I like, uh, what you did, the, uh, the, the curling or whatever. I actually, I'm fascinated by the, the, the weight on the ice, I, I would love to watch it. Would love to cheer on, cheer on Team USA. But I just have a hard time with this one. You know, so when I was in college, my this is my, my very first dose of activism. I was a freshman in college, and there was a cable company. That cable company had been a, a local provider of cable for years, and ultimately... Uh, Cox Communications started expanding cable in middle Georgia where my college was at Mercer University. And so the small cable company wound up solely providing cable to the university. That was it. Uh, they were the last customers and the, um, so, and they charged exorbitant fees. So you could get Cox cable for about half the price of the cable company that gave cable to to the the university it wasn't good cable and so i organized the boycott encouraging every student on campus to cancel their cable account and would probably have to do it for a month and i got convinced by some of the people with me that i should keep the cable after all there are changes and stuff who was going to know and I always felt guilty about that. To this day, I've always felt guilty that having organized the boycott and gotten every student to cancel their cable account, I didn't cancel mine uh, because I was convinced by others that I should keep it going so I could monitor the feed. And also, if people really did want to watch TV, they'd come to my room. <laughs> so I did. I've always felt guilty about it. Confess your sins. This is me confessing a sin. Uh, so uh, ever since then, I'm like, I will tell people what I'm doing, but I will never encourage anyone else to boycott. Uh, so I'm, I'm blocking the NBC Olympics account, uh, not one minute of coverage. I just, I, as much as I want to, I really want to watch the skeleton. It's such an awesome event. I just, I can't bring myself to do it this year. And if somebody in my family wants to watch it, I, I don't care if somebody in my family wants to watch it. I don't want to give NBC coverage because I'm appalled at already the coverage they're giving China. It's just awful. Um, I just, I, I really, really, really think that it's it's unfortunate that we went forward with taking athletes to the Olympics. And look, I've got a friend of mine who uh, was a, a trained athlete for the Olympics, and he's he's sensitive on the subject because he was an athlete and he knows the hard work it goes and what it would be like devastating to those who would have to wait four years to go back 
to the Olympics and they may age out in the process. And I, I totally get that concern. I do. But we are talking about a country that is engaged in operating concentration camps for the purposes of eradicating an ethnic religious minority and anyone who dissents from the Communist Party. And I think that some things are more important, and this is one of them. Uh, and it's hard, too, because of all the things that you and I buy that are made in China, and there's no good alternative to those things. And you either give up on life itself to a degree or you have to go with it. And, you know, so my solution is where I can, I will say no. And this is one of those things where I can say no. And you do you, I guess, as the kids say these days. We'll be back with your phone calls and something else. A buddy of mine who I was talking about is listening he asked me, he says, I won't bother calling in today. <laughs> I love you, man. I know you're listening. Um, I just, this one, this one, just the, the, the more of the stuff that comes out about China, it just, man, it's just, it, it, so the Biden administration today, while all of this is going on, uh, is announcing that it is loosening some of the Trump era sanctions against China, but will extend tariffs on most solar panels. But in a nod, this is from the Associated Press, but in a nod to efforts to combat climate change and boost clean energy, Biden is loosening restrictions on some panels used in large-scale utility product projects. So for you homeowners out there, there's still going to be tariffs on solar panels. But for the large-scale industrial solar panels, China builds, eh, we'll let those in without any tariffs. It's just uh, frustrating. Okay, to the phones. Kevin, you're going to be up next. Welcome. How are you? All right, man. I'm doing great. How you doing, Eric? Great. All right. Listen, a very quick point I wanted to make. Uh, I would never take up for Nancy Pelosi. However, her telling them to be quiet at the Olympics is probably the smartest thing she's ever said, considering that we left... Americans in Afghanistan, if you open your mouth in China, we are not coming to get you. And it's probably the best thing for them to keep their mouth shut. You know, I, I got to give it to you. That is a fair point. Uh, I mean, heck, we, we've, we've told the Americans in Ukraine, you need to get out, but we're not going to help you. Uh, so, yeah, that that's a very fair point that they would be stuck there. Uh, give them 10 years and suddenly we'd see them at the, at the Olympics on the Chinese team after they had been reeducated. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that's probably, that, that's probably the smartest thing that's ever come out of her mouth, but well, I just you know, figured, uh, I, I do want you to know, I did go back and, and watch the video of her doing it and she did have the arched eyebrows on, which means she was being very serious. <laughs> Well, I guess she drew him on there to yep. Drew, make it drew right. on. Yep. All right, man. Listen, I appreciate it, Kevin. 877-973-7425. I got to move on to other stuff because uh, this is one of those topics where if I got on it, I could probably stay on it all day and I don't need to because I would bore you all. But it's just one of those things where I'm just it, – it, it, infuriates me that uh, we should be able to celebrate the Olympics and we can't because the International Olympic Committee, a ruthlessly corrupt organization, has handed it over to a ruthlessly corrupt regime. I'm going to move on, though. The Christian Science Monitor has a story out. And I want to read you some of this to set the stage. The headline here is Democrats Woke a Sleeping Giant. Why Parents Say They've Had Enough. Jennifer Reisman has always been a proud Democrat, a single mother who lives in one of the nation's bluest counties. She says some of her favorite items of clothing include T-shirts from both Hillary Rodham Clinton's and Senator Elizabeth Warren's presidential campaigns. But as America enters its third year of the COVID-19 pandemic, Ms. Reisman is actively organizing to vote her local and state Democratic leaders out of office. I can't look my kids in the eye and say I care about your education and vote for the Democrats right now, says Ms. Reisman, a pediatric neuropsychologist from Rockville, Maryland. I cannot believe that this is where we are, but it feels personal. It feels painful. 
In 2020, Democrats won the White House and Senate in part by pitching themselves as the party that would take the pandemic seriously and get it under control. More than 90% of Democratic voters thought precautions like avoiding group gatherings and closing in-person schooling were necessary in the early months of the pandemic. In crucial swing states, a majority of voters said in exit polling that containing the virus was more important than rebuilding the economy. But a little over a year later, America's in a different place. Vaccines are widely available. Numerous studies have confirmed the virus poses little risk to children, and public health officials have characterized Omicron as less virulent than previous variants. And a growing number of Democratic voters like Ms. Reisman are voicing frustration over the mounting toll of pandemic protocols, particularly those affecting kids and their education. You did not have to be a rocket scientist to know this was going to happen. I have said repeatedly, I couldn't believe how bad the Democrats are at politics right now. And they are. It's been obvious for a while. All you have to do is talk to the parents. One of the problems the Democrats have right now is a lot of their public policy is being led by people who don't have kids. That, that's a statement of fact. It, it isn't meant to disparage. Some people get offended by that, but it's kind of true. And those who do have kids who are helping set public policy tend to be from wealthy families whose money has insulated the kids from the effects of of the public school system shutting down. They are out of touch with a lot of Americans and not just in what they would call flyover country, not just in the heartland, but in places like Maryland. Maryland, a democratic state, a very progressive state. Parents are thinking just for two years, we got to suck it up. Just two years, we got to suck it up and vote Republican. And by the way, the Republicans are using that argument, saying, look, I know you don't like us, but just give us two years. We'll sort this stuff out. See if you like us. You can throw us out in two years. I promise we won't make it worse. And it's a compelling message for a lot of parents out there right now who are furious about what's going on. Now, for a lot of you, I know where my stations are and where my listeners come from. And a great many of you are insulated from what's happening out there. I want to play you this audio. This is an assistant principal in a Loudoun County school. Loudoun County is in Northern Virginia. In Northern Virginia, they swung pretty hard for Glenn Youngkin, the parents did up there, because of what's happening in schools. And Glenn Youngkin came in and said, stop shutting down the schools, stop going remote, and stop making kids wear masks. This is an assistant principal in Loudoun County. Um, until you arrive, your children will be held in an in-school restriction situation here at school. Um, it is important that I point out to you, it's stated in the letter that you'll receive, but it's important that I point out to you that they are not allowed on campus or on Loudoun County Public School property. Um, starting tomorrow, it will be considered trespassing. So it's important that I make that statement to you. Uh, but we'll look forward to hearing from you uh, via phone so you can let us know so how, how, long can, how long can they be suspended for? The guidelines that we're receiving from the county is student suspensions will end as soon as they are fully following mitigation policies. You got that? If the kid shows up at school, they'll be charged with trespassing. There's no mask on. The governor issued an executive order say no more mask mandates for schools. And they are literally going to charge the kids with trespassing for showing up at school without a mask on. What is bizarre to me is for years, pediatricians, for years, pediatricians and psychiatrists, childhood psychiatrists and psychologists said children need to see facial expressions. They need you in their faces. They need you smiling and happy and they'll be happy. And then when all this stuff came out and mask mandates became controversial, you know, the American Pediatric Association memory hold all that data. Nope, we never said that. And now suddenly it's coming back out. 
Suddenly it's coming out, and suddenly we're finding that young kids in particular have relational problems with people because of masks. They're having a hard time reading facial expressions. You can learn a lot from someone's facial expression. You know, I I, I like to watch stand-up comedians, particularly Dave Chappelle, who I really do believe is the best out there. You can listen sometimes to the jokes of people and you can't tell what the punchline is unless you can see their facial expression. And we got a bunch of kids out there who don't understand and can't read facial expressions right now. And the parents are starting to understand it. They're starting to see the effects at home of the isolation of the masks of everything else of the stupidity of some of the policies where in schools up North, it's 20 degrees, 10 degrees, it's snowing and they have the windows open or making the kids eat lunch outside the absurdity of it all. The Democrats have made a lot of their base mad. They don't get it. And you know, part of this is the Democrats thought they had suburbia locked up because of Donald Trump. You know, so as an aside here, as a tangent, the Democrats look like they have now in in all the partisan redistricting out there that they've done better than the Republicans and they may actually have a five-seat edge now in redistricting. They've been so aggressive in Democrat-controlled states getting rid of Republicans. Republicans, meanwhile, have been more conservative in their estimates. The reason is because the conservatives think Uh, We still want to be in control in 10 years. We don't want the population shifts that are happening in our states to throw us off so that in six years, suddenly all of our Republican seats become Democrat. We want to make sure that our seats in the worst case scenarios in 10 years will still be in our control. The Democrats are so aggressive, and the problem is they're using data to determine the partisan makeup of these districts based on Trump's existence. And a D plus two district may actually be an R plus five district with Donald Trump out of the picture, and they haven't paid attention to that. So they're drawing these narrow Democratic wins where in a wave year, they're going to get wiped out anyway. And part of it is they thought that they now control the suburbs. But they were just renting the suburbs. They don't own the suburbs. The suburbs have always been Republican until Trump. I know a lot of you love Donald Trump, and a lot of you live in areas where you don't have suburbs, and you need to understand that suburban Republicans care about their kids and their 401ks. And they arguably care about their 401ks more than their kids. And they felt like Donald Trump was disrupting their 401ks, and Joe Biden would be more stable for their 401k, so they went with him. Not only... Are they doing worse under Joe Biden than Donald Trump with their 401ks? Their kids at school are suffering. Not only that, there's crime. Crime has made it to suburbia, a a spillover effect from urban areas. They're upset. Everything's gotten worse for them under the Democrats. Joe Biden told him, if you vote for me, I'll bring normalcy back. If you vote for me, I won't make you embarrassed on social media. If you vote for me... You won't have to worry about things. We may disagree, but I'll be your president. Joe Biden came in. The wokes took him over, held him hostage. He gets lost on the White House lawn, doesn't know where he's going. People are furious. Parents are mad. The Democrats poked the bear. They woke it up. The mixed metaphor here, poking the bear and the sleeping giant. Oh, man, they woke up a giant bear called parents. The parents are livid. And the parents are going to go vote against their political party, the Democrats, put Republicans in charge and say, hey, just two years. I can suck it up for two years with these people because everything the Democrats touch right now makes it worse for my 401k, worse for crime, worse for my kids. It was foreseeable. It was easily foreseeable. It really was. And yet the Democrats couldn't see it coming. Because so many of them are either without children or wealthy enough to insulate themselves from the effects of what's going on in society around them. And the media is very much like that and in the same bubble and didn't realize until it was too late. And they're going to have hell to pay because of it come November, no matter what they do with redistricting. Hi there, it is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-97-ERIC, 877-973-7425. 
What do you do with Joe Biden on this stuff? I kind of find it funny, but uh, he keeps saying this thing, and it's just not true. See, this doesn't violate anybody's Second Amendment right. There's no violation of a Second Amendment right. We talk like there's no amendment that's absolute. When the amendment was passed, it didn't say anybody can own a gun and any kind of gun and any kind of weapon. You couldn't buy a cannon and when the, this, this uh, amendment was passed. And so no reason why you should be able to buy certain assault weapons. But that- Actually, Mr. President, you could. Even the New York or the Wall, the Washington Post fact checked this last year. The canon element is what's most interesting here, but we should also address his framing of the Second Amendment. The meaning of the Second Amendment, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. But uh, Joe Biden, according to the Washington Post, I think this is deeply relevant here, the Washington Post says Joe Biden gets his understanding of the Second Amendment wrong. Joe Biden says you couldn't buy a cannon after the Second Amendment was adopted. Actually, yes, you could. You really, really, really could. In fact, you could buy a machine gun when they came around. Uh, yes. You could buy those weapons. I would love to have a cannon. I would love to have a machine gun. I was out in Las Vegas uh, last year and got to shoot a machine gun that had a built-in suppressor. They actually got you to take your uh, ear protection off to shoot it. It was so quiet. Now, for those of you who don't know, and I actually have to admit, I was one of those people who did not know for the longest time. When you see the silencer, they call it, James Bond, somebody would put the silencer on and they would fire it on TV or movie. It goes pew, pew. And nobody hears it. Actually, you do hear it. It is a loud sound, but it's not that loud. So, for example, I would like to get a suppressor. If I ever had to shoot a gun in my house, uh, it wouldn't blow out my eardrums. It's loud, but it's not pew, pew. It was really cool shooting this machine gun. I mean, literally, uh, there's a suppressor built in, and so you fire it, and it is it's loud. It's a machine gun, but it's not that loud. I really want one. And apparently you can buy, you know, you can buy machine guns that I think they're made prior to or prior to 1981 or something like that. So you can buy a machine gun. They just got to be older machine guns. And this one, I think on, on the like regular market goes, they told me if I had like fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, I could buy one. Maybe I need to start a GoFundMe campaign or you people need to subscribe to my sub stack uh, in, in high numbers so I can get one. I'd let you shoot it. But nonetheless... Joe Biden saying you couldn't own a cannon during the era of the American uh, New Republic period of the the late 1700s, early 1800s. Yes, you were allowed to buy a cannon in the United States. And I got to tell you, that's pretty awesome. Joe Biden, by the way, has over time moved this statement as the Washington Post notes that he moved it to say uh, 20 years after the Revolutionary War, you could no longer buy a cannon. That's actually not true either. That's not true either. You could do that 20 years after the Revolution. It was only later, around the time of the Civil War, that a lot of states started restricting at the state level what you could and could not buy. It was only in the last 15 years that the Supreme Court finally declared the Second Amendment an individual right that trumps state regulation to a degree. You know, that there's a a preemption of of each amendment, but it's on a case-by-case basis of which of these in the Bill of Rights actually do override state laws. And finally, they decided the Second Amendment, along with all the others, was one of them, which was kind of obvious. You knew it was going to happen to be consistent. But it all depends on, on laws, and there was not a law against canon ownership for a very long time in this country, I would love to have one and lots of machine guns. You should always have more guns. I was listening, I guess it was Dave Chappelle who who said that, um, you know, the First Amendment comes first for a reason and the Second Amendment comes second in case something happens to the first. There's some truth there. It's 2022. Things are still crazy. 
things haven't settled down. And now you got the Federal Reserve and interest rates, you got the economy, you got inflation. A lot of banks won't even return your phone call. Let's say you're a small business and you need a loan for $750,000 or higher. You see an opportunity where banks, they don't even want to see you. You want to buy a building, you want to build a building, reach out to the Frost family at First Liberty Building and Loan. They've been helping small businesses become big businesses since the 1990s. They want to help you if they can. So spend 10 minutes with them. See if you're a good fit for them and they're a good fit for you. Their website is firstlibertyga.com. That's firstlibertyga.com. Again, you need a loan, $750,000 or higher. You're a small business and you see an opportunity to grow. Share it with the Frost family and see if they can help you. Firstlibertyga.com. That's firstlibertyga.com. First Liberty Building and Loan can help businesses nationwide become bigger businesses. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the chumba life. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. we prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.